for for some nurturing there that they didn't get from their parents. Right. Uh, and so I, I imagine that in itself promotes homosexuality, yeah. divorce. Right, right. And, you know, and, and, and uh, back to that previous uh, uh, statistics here, you know, what we're, what we're being told is, you know, the only people that commit suicide are homosexuals. You know, you, know you, you made me feel bad about my sexuality, so I'm going to kill myself. Mm -hmm. Well, what about all these people that are from broken homes that feel neglected and, right. and, and, and mistreated and abused and whatever, worthless? You know, no one talks about that. And, and again, let's get back to where we started here. What we're dealing with, friends, is this is a product of people neglecting what God says on marriage and divorce, period. Has, you know, let's forget homosexuality for a minute. Right. Traditional marriage. We're putting the ball back in the court of the so-called you know, Christians who all of a sudden now we make a stand against homosexual. You know, we don't feel it's as much of a problem you know, with marriage and divorce uh, if they've been married 20 times, as long as it's a man and a woman, you know, we're, we're fine with that. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the kids? You know, what about the kids? So, again, you know, God had a plan, and man is saying, well, we're just going to, we're going to squash it. We're going to, you know, uh, disregard it, disregard it. Uh, children from broken homes are much more likely to have a difficult time obtaining and maintaining steady employment. Now, Mark, when I first when I first read this, one thing that I think about is uh, you do what you see. Yeah. You do what you see. When a child's parent walks off, leaves. Yeah. Right, well, I get tired of my job. You're like Daddy yeah. did. Walk off. I give up. I quit. Yeah, I quit. I quit. I quit on it. And also think about this: How many times do parents do do this? The single parent, single family unit now. Uh, how many times do they get child support? You know, we hear all talking about deadbeat dads. Mm -hmm. You know, well, wh why is he a deadbeat? Well, he's not providing. You know, I believe Paul said something about providing for your own, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, first yeah. Timothy chapter five. Uh, yeah. Let's see, First Timothy five and uh, verse eight, I do believe. I was actually thinking. Of... Okay. <laughs> but if he, <laughs> but if any provide not for his own, especially. For those of his own house, he is denied the faith and worse than an infidel. And, and you know, here's what we're dealing with, Mark. We're dealing with people, again, here's a problem. This is a society problem, a social problem that's come, that is on us, that we're dealing with it. We've been dealing with it long before the homosexual issue, ever, uh, a marriage issue ever reared its head. You know, that's only been really coming on the scene for the past, what, maybe 10 years, ten years yeah. maybe 10 years. And, and here we are now, but we're dealing with, we've been dealing with this for a long time. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, it's just not as big, I didn't think it was as big as a problem. You know? Well, I wish you'd made a stand 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Uh, children of parents who have ended their marriage are more likely to become teen parents producing out-of-wedlock babies than the children of lifelong married parents. All right, now think about that for a moment. Children who have, are, 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 have parents who ended their marriage are more likely to become teen parents. Okay, so what does that promote? Abortion? Yep. You see, now, now you've got another social issue that is, you know, tagged along, grabbing the coattails. And, 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 and I, you know, Jerry Falwell and Charles Stanley, well, Jerry Falwell is dead now, but uh, Charles Stanley, are they going to change their, their mind on their business? Yeah. A abortion issue now? Okay. Yeah. Well, Half the people in America are for abortion. Yeah. We need, maybe we need to rethink our stand on that too, right? Please. How about we get back to what the Bible says yeah. and we can cut all this social problems out, you know, the, the social uh, uh, drag on society. Now, here's just a little tidbit on that. Uh, these children are three times more likely to have emotional or behavior problems than they will if their biological parents stay together. Well, it makes sense. It makes sense. You know why? You know why uh, girls, young girls, are more susceptible to uh, uh, 
being taken into say, like a porn industry or something like that or being abused, it's because if they don't have an intact family, there's no security there. Mm -hmm. So they go, uh, it was an old country song, looking for love in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened, you know. That's exactly what happened. So they get, they get caught up in this, and they say, you know, now the teen pregnancy, uh, on those lines, when parents in their marriage, there's a dramatic change in children's attitude towards sexual behavior. All right? So the child, what does the child do? Step over just a little bit. Child approval of premarital sex and cohabitation and divorce rises dramatically while their endorsement of marriage and childbearing is reduced. Well, it would because mom and daddy don't care about it, you know? Right. And so all we're doing is, we, you know, they're just creating a, a cycle here, creating a snowball effect. Um, and, you know, James, the, the rebellion of children today, you know, in that situation, I've, I've seen it myself amongst my own, you know, relatives and all, nieces and nephews. You can't tell me what to do. You know, they yep. go off and marry and, you know, live with somebody. And you can't tell me what to do. And, well, they see that when it comes to religion, you know, if, if someone, you know, wants to talk to them about what they're doing wrong religiously, they see their parents and, well, I don't want to talk about yeah. it. You can't talk to me yeah. about that, you know, so yeah, why, why not? Yeah, aggressive behavior against yeah. anybody trying to correct them or give them any kind of guidance. That's right. You know, we just don't want to hear rebellion against the law. And, and again, there's a reason why God's wisdom, he said, one man, one woman for life. And, and those people bring children out of that union. union. Uh, in Proverbs 5, it's kind of a lengthy read. We won't read it, but I'll just say, if you, friends, if you go and read Proverbs chapter 5, uh, Solomon said, uh, he talked about staying with the wife of your youth and let the fountain flow from that wife. Mm -hmm. You know, In other words, let your offspring only come from one person. That's, that's the whole point right there. And not to mention, you know, we're cutting down on all these other social problems like abortion and, you know, we want to get into, you know, sexually transmitted diseases, things like that. I'm going to hang up. Okay. So, uh, just on those lines here, following a divorce, most mothers have to work full-time. This combination of divorced and full-time working mothers leads to the highest levels of sexual, act, sexual activity in teenagers. Uh, Mark, when there's uh, when there's no guidance in the home, because we're trying, you know, they're trying to the the, the mom and dad or the, the mother, or the single parents trying to provide. Uh, oftentimes, a child is left to themselves. You know, now there's a there's no saying about that. Uh, an idle idle mind or idle hands, or the devil's workshop, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and. Uh, and the proverb writer actually actually uh, talks about that. Let's see if I can find that here. Uh, the uh, the child left to himself. And uh, if uh, let me find this, what are some what are some uh, uh, some other problems you can see as a result of this? You know, single parent working all the time. Um, drugs. Finding children, children, you know, they have more time, to, like I said, to, to hang out with the wrong crowd, so they'll, they'll get into the drug scene. Right. Uh, we've already discussed. The, uh, I'm looking for, uh, I, have, I have the margin of my Bible marked here. I have latchkey kid. You know, a latchkey kid is... As a, as, a per, as a kid, a child that comes home and basically he's by himself for a good period of time, and there's all kinds of problems that arise when when they're by themselves. <clears throat> uh, Is it 1915? Proverbs 1915. Uh, 1915. 1915. Uh, mm, no. Not in my Bible. Uh, uh, I'm looking for my note more than anything, but anyway, uh, that kind of uh, bugs me. I can't find that. But what, what we're talking about is 
you know, the idea that when a, a parent is off working, you know, sometimes they say, well, I've got to provide. Well, it was God's plan. It was God's plan that the, the, the family work as a unit, you know. If the husband can provide, the mother can nurture. And I said, oh, that's, that's sexist and whatever. Well, no, it's not. There's wisdom there. You know, there's wisdom in that, but yet our society has corrupted it and twisted it and perverted it and added a greater burden to it by saying, well, it's okay to divorce. All right? So, uh, but anyway, when, uh, when these, these children are left to themselves, now they're, they have a higher uh, degree of, uh, I don't know, uh, what, um, curiosity, you know, more time to, to be curious, and so they get into more trouble. Now, here's, here's one more quote with another statistic here. Daughters of divorced parents find it, find it more difficult to value their femininity or to believe that they are genuinely lovable. Well, why? Well, daddy left me. Daddy didn't love me. I'm, I, like I said, they're looking for love in all the wrong places now. Mm -hmm. So here you go. You, go find, you try to find what God intended for you to have with your father, you know, a genuine love for a uh, father and child, and particularly with girls now, we're going to find it in a different place. Well, what was the result here? 53% of teen mothers come from fatherless homes. And yet, what are we told? What does Jerry Falwell say? What did, what did uh, Charles Stanley do? What is uh, uh, Billy Graham say? Well, you just, you know, God can forgive you. You just, you just make a family and leave a family as many times as you need to. Wait a minute, that's not God's plan. All you're doing is adding to the problem. All you're doing is adding to the trouble. All you're doing is adding to the social, uh, uh, the, the social, the social problems. All right, uh, Matt, go ahead. You want to just put the phone lines up because we're just going through some of these statistics here. Uh, go ahead and put the phone lines up if you don't mind. Uh, children of divorced parents move away from their families of origin more than children of intact marriages. Now think about that. We're, we're talking about the role that marriage and divorce and getting away from God's plan on, on, the, on the family unit has on society. Well, 90% of homeless or runaway children, Mark, come from a fatherless family. 90%. Now, isn't that dangerous? Isn't that a burden on society? How much... I mean, I don't have the figures in front of me, but how much money is spent trying to find missing children? And maybe because they've been run, they run away or maybe because they've been abducted? Mm -hmm. Well, do you not care about your child enough to make a commitment to your wife or your husband and then say, you know what, I'm going I'm to help this child get through life? You know, it scares me to death to think about you know what it would be like for my ch my children to grow up without one of their parents, because I, I mean in this world, I mean I just I just cringe. Yet people just well, you know whatever. And the reason they do that is because here's the preachers going, hey, marry as many times as you want to, seventy times seven. And we had a preacher on here, mm -hmm. you know that actually said that. Well, seventy times seven, seventy times seven. Yeah, when you have no really moral standards. I mean, what actual hope is there for, for anything, for, for sticking around or doing anything, yeah. really? Uh, I mean, if this life is all there is, why not eat, drink, marry, hey. and, and be happy? Can't let, can't let kids and a wife tie me down, you know? Yeah, and that's what our society has been led to believe now. Right. And it's, it is scary. And so like you said earlier about, about the commitment, you know, well, uh, mom and daddy aren't committed to each other. So why should I have a commitment to my job, yeah. you know, or my family? And as a matter of fact, what this does is this creates a cycle. You know, the next generation looks, well, mom and daddy didn't make it. You know, they just gave up on it. So it's no big deal if I give up on it. Well, they may give up on it two or three times. And they bring children to the world. And, and the norm then is, well, it must be normal to have a family with only uh, one mommy or one daddy. Well, it's not a far stretch thing for someone to come along. Oh, no, it's normal to have two mommies and two daddies. See that? Mm -hmm. And we get all upset about that. No, no. You can't have a family with two mommies and two daddies. But it's okay to have a family with one mom 
or one dad or two moms and two dads if they're stepmom and stepdad, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what's the difference in, in, the, in the lesbian having, having a child with two moms or the, the homosexual having two fathers and this child over here having two dads because mom married my real dad and my stepdad. Polygamy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not talking about polygamy. I'm saying, but he goes, oh, oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Mom's, mom and dad divorced, and they both remarried. Now what? Now we've got two moms and two dads, don't we? Yeah. What's oh, the difference? All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's look right here. A divorce gives birth to higher levels of jealousy, moodiness, infidelity, conflicts over money, excessive drinking, drug use among children. Well, it just goes to show, friends, that here's the, the breakdown of a family is the breakdown of society. And all you preachers out here saying, well, I'm not going to make a stand on marriage and divorce. You know, you can marry and divorce as many times as you want to. Well, here's what you're promoting right here. This is what you're promoting. You're promoting this right here. You're promoting... Children, you know, getting caught up in all the world in this, that's going to suck them down and make it harder for them to even find the truth, you know. Yep. But yet, as long as they're not homosexuals, they'll make it. They'll make it. No, friends, th this is a bigger problem than than what than what uh, uh, mm -hmm. you may think. You going to say something? Well, I'm, as far as what Charles Stanley said, you know, and and really all of them. They're, basically catering to the world and Paul says in Romans <coughs> chapter 12 he says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is a reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that uh, what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God so instead of them conforming to the world and saying well the divorce rate is so high we just we might as well say that you know, let's reevaluate. Yeah, reevaluate. Don't be too hard on. Don't, don't yeah. you know, water it down. Say it's all right, and that brings along the homosexual marriage, mm -hmm. same-sex marriage, whatever. And you know, God knows on what's what's coming down yeah. the line next. Yeah. And uh, instead of you know holding up the standard and not conforming to the world, but they're conforming to the world. Yeah. And, and all does it, it just creates more problems. Yeah. You know, and that's what we've been saying. You know. You want to say, people say, well, here's the issue is homosexual marriage. No, friends, homosexual marriage is like one, you know, it's one little, you know, bump. Yeah. This is, you know, this is a whole, whole row of problems that have been created because the religious folks that only want to make a stand against homosexual marriage, and I, I'm glad they want to make a stand, but how about make a stand way back here on God's word instead of taking issue with, with, with man's law? Yeah. Good evening, Carly. You want to work from the Lord? Yes, James. You've, you've heard the saying, the apple don't fall far from the tree. Right. How, as a society, how are we going to break that chain with uh, families that's been going through the same uh, rotation over and over through generations? You know, it's hard to change one's mind. They, they, they seem like they're right in their, in their orchard when what? they need to get into the book of the yeah. Uh, well, the problem is the the problem is uh, things are learned easier than they are, you know, by, learned by example. In other words, people see it and they learn that easier than you know. If you tell them now, you shouldn't do that, and so things are easier to learn than they are to unlearn. So, but the only way to change society is you've got to have people that are dedicated, and determined to hold people to the society, to hold the standard. You know, when you start when you start. Uh, uh, saying, well, I'm not going to condemn anybody. This idea of don't judge anybody, that's really where we got, you know, getting off on the wrong foot. Because right. when people say, well, you can't judge me or I can't judge anybody, well, now all of a sudden I can't say anything's right or wrong. Yeah. I can't but talk you know, about... The, the government's almost stepping in on that. If you say something and someone gets offensive over it and it strikes out at you or something, then you have a lawsuit against you. Well, That's what we've been saying yeah. all along. As goes the pulpit, so goes the, the country. That's right. So, so the pulpit won't speak out against it. And now, so then, now you've got the government coming in and say you can't speak out against it. Well, all of a sudden now, 
now the now the church is, and I'm saying the church very loosely using religion. You know, now all of a sudden the church is saying, "Well, we're going to speak out against it." Well, you should have speak out against it a long time ago. Yeah. You know. And we, we, really, we really need to check on who we vote and, and office. And stuff. Well, check the background. I'm saying. You know, it, I do appreciate your program. Yeah. I, I really enjoy. It. All right. All right. Thanks for your call. All right. So yeah, it. But you know, like like I said. Checking with the vote. I mean, that's that's good. I believe that. But but the problem is, it's not it's not just the one you vote. It's got to be who who influenced the person that you're voting for. And it's got to be more than just voting too. It's got to be yeah. some action taking place. It, it's it's not you know this book is what's going to change the world. You know, it's I mean, not going to be a Democrat or Republican. It's going to be we get the callers redeemer. like this gentleman here that calls in and where yeah. where where is he at? And other callers that call in. You know, where are they at? Religiously, I watched that program a little bit of it last night called The Will of the People with Mary Martin on uh, Channel 18 last night. And the will of the people, it, it ain't going to do nothing if they, you know, don't act. I mean, yeah. they can go cast a vote for the, their favorite politician or whatever, but that's not going to make uh, a bit of difference. Uh, we've right. already seen that with the overturn of the Marriage Act. Right. I mean, we the will of the people <laughs> voted. Uh, for the marriage between one man and one woman. And again, and this is the problem here. We're, we're going to, and I say we, the people are going to the government to say this is what, this is how we want to define marriage. It don't matter how you want to define marriage right. because the homosexuals come along and say, no, we want to redefine it. And, and if they get their majority way, then what are you going to do and about it? And the government sees the, all these religious kooks you know, say, well, you can't judge, you can't judge, and so they're getting by with it. Yeah. And so the government, like you said, they say, well, you can't judge, you can't That's judge, right. so we're going to overturn it, and we're going to say, okay, That's right. it's, it's legal now. That's right. That's right. So that's where we're at. <clears throat> well, so let's look, more now let's look at some effects of society. I mean, that's the children. We've seen what dropping the bond marriage divorce has done for, for uh, the children. Now, what about society? Let's look at some of these quickly. Uh, with the increase of the dissolution of marriage, all right, more marriage, more divorces, there's an increase in overall crime rate in the society. Now, one reason because of that is you don't have any structure at home. You don't have any uh, what Bring, discipline. Bringing the children up in yeah. the admonition of the Lord. You don't have anybody that's saying, hey, you don't need to be staying out on the street, you know, at, at 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. Yeah, what are you doing outside? I, I, you know, Sometimes I come in late, you know, I'm here at the TV station, I'll come, I'll get home, you know, now it'd be almost midnight, you know, and there's people walking up down the street. What are you doing out there? Yeah. I mean, what, I mean, what goes on? Nothing good really happens between 10 and 2 o'clock, you know, over, over near where I used to live in Eden, mm -hmm. at 3 o'clock in the morning, drive by shooting, 3 o'clock in the morning, and the police came and, and checked our neighbor's house for bullet holes. Now, what was that all about? Mm -hmm. These guys have been at the bar, got in a fight, drove all around town. They drove all around uh, Eden, you know, exchanging gunfire. Yeah, now what happened? Well, I guarantee you, I can, I can guarantee you that there's not an intact family and there's not someone going, you need to get home, you need to get in the bed, you right. need, you know, putting some rules down here. Yep. And so it just goes to show that when there's no uh, discipline or structure at home, society pays, society for, it. pays for it. And why are, why is society doing this? Why is there no structure at home? Because all these uh, you know weak need weak back preachers are going. We need to rethink what we're teaching on marriage and divorce because you know we want people to be able to you know marry and divorce as many times as we want to, and and not be accused of judging. Yeah, if I, if I speak out against it, I'll lose half my congregation. Isn't that yeah. you know what uh, Jerry Falwell stated before he died? Yeah, I, something like something that. I couldn't like find that, but yeah. yeah. It's probably in that same, that same sermon dealing with divorce. Uh, a recent uh, U.S. study has, has found that children without biological parents in the home are roughly three times more likely to commit a crime that leads to incarceration as compared to children from intact families. And again, you know, people say, well, Two, two men and two women, that's not, that's, not a, that's not a family. But you're not saying anything about all these people that are living in single-parent families, mm -hmm. you know. 
that's not God's, God's family the way he'd have it either. And so, you know, now we've gone from, we've gone from, uh, our society has gone from like television shows, you know, Leave it to Beaver. You know, you've got a mom and a dad intact family unit. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and we've gone from, uh, you know, Father Knows Best and things like that. And we've gone to Modern Family where you've got two homosexuals and I don't know what all goes on, you know. Well, uh, it's, it's, I, it's just some of the filthiest programming on TV there ever, ever was now. Right. Children of divorced parents are significantly more likely to become a delinquent by age 15 as compared to children living with their parents. Remember, we just said 90% of children who are homeless are run away come from a fatherless home. Well, why is that? Because God, God intended for the family unit to look a certain way. And people are saying, well, we're going to, we're going to dumb that down. Uh, what about some financial effects of not keeping God's plan on marriage as he was having? Uh, families Why that were, that? I'm sorry? I said quite naturally, if you got a woman that, that has had you know a couple of children, right. she's probably not working. All right, if, if her husband, the breadwinner, he leaves, then that's really going to put a burden mm -hmm. on her. And, mm -hmm. and so she's so. not going to be uh, having the financial stability that she has. That's right. F families that were not poor before the divorce, the drop in income can be as much as 50%, it says. A drop in parents' income directly affects the children over time in terms of proper nutrition. You know, now, right. we, well, you start eating cheaper food, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I can't, can't, make, ends can't make, you know, I mean, fresh food, whatever, costs more, so you know, now we're starting to eat, you know, you know, dollar, dollar menu stuff. Uh, involvement in extracurricular activities, right? Well, we, you know, we can't participate in all these sports, whatever, because a lot of times they cost a little money or something like that. Uh, clothing and school choices also have an effect. You know, can't afford to send our chi child to this school. Right. Um, the source of income becomes half and expenses are increasing. Uh, there's always a decline in the standard of living. And that's just, that's just, fact, right? If you don't have the money coming in, you start lowering your standard of living. Mm -hmm. And that in turn leads to uh, a, a lower standard of living for the child. A couple that enjoyed uh, married, you know, they may have enjoyed a nice standard of living, but then once the assets are divided, now you, you split everything up. Now you can't share, yeah. see? So that affects the child too. The vacations they used to have? That, yeah, well. yeah. Good evening, caller. You on the word from the Lord? Hello? Yes, you on there? Yes. Is this is uh, Bam's own. This is a word from the Lord. This is what? This is a word from the Lord. Television program. All right. Thanks for your call. I think wrong number or something. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but, but again, friends, see, what we're saying is, let, let's keep in mind, this is not, this is not about homosexual marriage. That's not the issue. The real issue is your preachers have not been teaching and towing the line on God's plan for marriage as it would have it. One man and one woman for life, and the only exception is divorce. You're saying, your, your preacher's saying, however many times you want to. Now, consider this, Mark. When people divorce, when people divorce, their life expectancies go down. Life expectancy for men and women uh, who ended their marriage are significantly lower than married people. And here's why. Because divorced men and women have more health complications uh, of some kind, due mainly to emotional trauma. Uh, the whole legal process is stressful. You know, now you've got, now you got a health issue. Now, what do you think that does to society? You say, well, that just affects that person. No, if I've got health problems now, because I'm stressed or, you know, now I've got PTSD or whatever it may be, what am I going to do? If I'm, if I'm all stressed out, what am I going to do? A lot of them are going to disability now. All right. Go to the doctor. Go try to get some disability. Well, who, who does that affect? Everybody. That affects society. All right? The more you go to the doctor, 
the insurance goes up. That's right. <clears throat> All right? The more the insurance has to pay out for, for, for medical expenses, what happens? Well, everybody's insur insurance rates go up. Oh, but we got social medicine. Well, who's paying for that? Society's paying for that. You see, friends, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And so what you do affects everybody else. You can't just say, well, I, Mark, I'm, I'm living over here by myself. You know, me and my wife have problems. It's not going to affect anybody. Yeah, it affects somebody. It affects a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, had a guy call him one time. I'd have to find it. You know, he's talking about homosexuals. He said, well, let him do it. It don't, it don't bother me. Well, it affects me. Mm -hmm. You know, it affects me and my children, my life. So uh, when people say, well, you know, people marrying and divorcing, many times they want to, it doesn't affect anybody. Yeah, it does. It, it affects all society. Health rates, health insurance, everything goes up. Many women both suffer decline in, in mental health following a divorce. That's why there's more cases of depression, Hostility among divorced men and women, it's because, you know, you know, they're moody. There's no, you know, no happiness there. Uh, all kinds of problems uh, come as a result of that. Alcoholism, alcoholism is more likely to be a problem among divorced than those who have not been divorced. Suicide rate is almost three times higher among divorced persons than among lifelong spouses. Now, you see what we're talking about, friends? Divorce, uh, what do we say, 63% of, of teenage divorces, uh, t uh, suicides come from father's home, the third leading cause of death among teenagers, and here, suicide among the adults is three times higher. Mm -hmm. And you want to tell somebody, well, let's restudy it. Let's restudy it because... You know, somebody might want to get divorced as many times as they want to before they find, to finally find someone's happy. What you're telling them is engage in something that is more likely to cause you stress, mental anguish, and even uh, three times greater to cause you to have su commit suicide because you're trying to find happiness. And going back to uh, Mr. Callum, you know, and I don't know if you're going to get to the callers or not that called on the buzz the other day. Yeah, yeah. But... They have, you know, I don't know, after calls that called in and even on the headlines and everybody that I've talked to and, and even myself and you, you know, went over, went over there and talked to him and we all say, you know, we appreciate you standing up for the truth, for that part of the truth. Well, why, why are the preachers, you know, what would, what would the uh, members of uh, Blessed Hope in Danville say? Mm -hmm. Well, Brian Edwards took a stand on biblical marriage, would they give him the same accolades and say, you know, we appreciate you. Would, would all the callers call in and, and say, you know, uh, appreciate you standing up yeah. for the truth? Yeah. Why not? If not, why not? It's, it's, God, it's, it's the truth. That's right. You know, if you love the truth so much and you want to oppose homosexual marriage, well, why don't you love the truth enough and, and, and promote someone, pat them on the back, shake their hand, whatever for you know, just coming on out and say, you know, God's plan on marriage is one man, one woman for life. That's right. And if you divorce for any other reason, you're sinning. You're living in adultery. That's no, right. we can't do that. But before I get this call, I want I want to get this one more uh, to this call. We'll get this one more uh, thing because here, here's what we're talking about, Mark. Now watch this. Divorce. Divorce often leads to disruption in religious practices. That is. The diminished practice of religion in turn can have negative consequences. So what happens? Well, we're divorced. We go through divorce, disrupts my family, disrupts my life, so I start, I don't go to church anymore. Yeah. Now, well, If they do, well, mama goes to this church, daddy goes right? to this one. And but watch this, we've come full circle. If they had gone to, if they had gone to, to church and heard the preacher saying, look, you need to be more committed to your marriage. You need to be more, more committed to your, your husband, your wife, your children. You know, you made a vow. You made a covenant to your, to, your, to your spouse. You know, here's what the Bible says. If you divorce for some from reason other than fornication, you're sinning. You're an adulterer. You're going to go to hell. You know, it's a sin. You're, you're going to affect your children. You're going to affect your, your livelihood. You're going to affect your health. You're going to hurt society. You're going to bring all these problems 
because you have failed to keep your commitment to God and to your spouse. Well, if they'd heard that at church, they'd been more committed to say, hey, you know, I've, I've got to keep this. I've got to right. be more determined. So now we've come full circle. I didn't hear it at church, so I'm going to eventually leave church. I, did, I wasn't encouraged at church to, to make my marriage work, so I'm going to leave. Well, I would too. Didn't do anything for me. And so, you see, friends, all because these people won't make a stand. Now, here's, here's what the caller asked. Mark, Mark was making mention of this. Uh, and I'm going to have to just play, uh, play at it, I guess you might say, because I don't know if I can... Uh, Um, what do you think about that? I know you'd mention anything about it. I just thought I'd speak. Yeah, you know, we, uh, uh, Jessica's. Be, I tell you what, Jessica's doing a whole show on that tomorrow. Okay, you definitely catch that. I'm sure Ken might be talking about it as well. But I know a lot of people want to know about it in y'all's area over there. Yeah. It will continue to fly. So heritage preservation prevails. Thank you a lot. All right. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Uh, yes, Jessica was caught. But uh, the owner of the prison ain't court. Yes, he had a kid. Off the topic, woman. Okay. All right. Uh, 656 2255. Good afternoon. Hey, Charles. How you doing? All right. Hey, hey Charles. I, I, I agree with my friend Johnny Robinson. Hey, if you're going to take up for one part of the Bible, why not take up for the other? Uh, in this case of, you know, giving couples that are. that just want a divorce. For I, I do think it's an interesting point, and I, and I kind of can see why. Opens up a whole can of worms, and why there has to be a separation of church and state. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I can see it, and I don't know. You know, some people can't. Some people want to mix the two, but but I I, I, I can really see why why we need a separation of church and state, and the employees that represent government need to be able to do it as well. That's true, uh, Charles. And uh, I mean, he he stood up for the part about the, the gay marriage situation, right? What's that? But you did. Oh, Johnny? No, 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 no. The judge. You mean talking about John Keller? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, he, he basically, he resigned because because they, they couldn't work it out with him. He wanted to do a shift where he wouldn't do marriages and they wouldn't work it out with him. They said he had to be equipped and ready to do paperwork for gay marriages like he would, like straight marriages. Right, but, uh, but when it's come down to what the Bible says about what constitutes a, a marriage divorce, he, he, he didn't say much about that, did he? You know, he didn't get asked that question, but, but I, I, I'm dying to ask it. I'm hoping somebody will answer that, because that, that's, that's a big one. I mean, it's it's like, I think what Johnny says is you, you can't be half the Bible, you got to be whole the Bible. There you go. Now you said it right, y'all. All right. But, all right. I'm just, I'm just interpreting. I'm, this all fascinating. <clears throat> all right. Now, now Mark, that, that, you know, the, the caller said, you know, why didn't he, you know, why didn't he, Make, make a stand on, on, a, on adultery yeah. or marriage or divorce, whatever. Yeah, that's what we asked him today. And that's what we asked him. And he said, well, I didn't have as big a problem. Maybe we should go back and just uh, have now, I don't know who this caller was, but, it, I mean, that's somebody there with some common sense. Yeah. You know, how are you going to make a stand on this part, but yet you just sweep the rest of it under the rug? The, the yeah. Well, here's what, here's what he said when we asked him. Uh, we said... Uh, would, would you, did you consider that certain men and women could not be married? And he said, I did, but I did not have as much a problem with that as I did with this other thing. And then he was asked, well, what about if the people told you they'd been divorced three or four times? And he said, I had to do it or get fired. Yeah. Okay. That was the same predicament yeah. he's in now. Yeah. So why didn't he design the, 12 same years difference. ago? I'm not, you're not defending, you're going against what God said, so why not? Why not just make the stand there? There's that's what we're talking about. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, now uh, one lady called near the end of the program, and she was asking, questioning, uh, why didn't Johnny say something to those uh, protesters there that were cursing? But he did say something about the guy in the wheelchair. But I think we've already explained that uh, yeah. because he was he was the one that was. Supposedly upholding Christianity, or uh, what he viewed it. I'm trying to, I, I don't see this timeline that you're talking about. Oh. I don't know 
know, but I can't see it. It's not on there. It's on there. Oh. So, uh, uh, okay. <coughs> uh, that's why I, I, I want to have this these clipped off here. There's a caller at the end that I wanted to really, really talk about. Uh, that I can't uh, that I, I can't find here. You said nothing. Right. The word. Right. You're gonna play both sides. Come prepared and be educated. And if you watch the show, you know I like to be a critical thinker and a lot of different things. And Johnny brings up points that nobody has even brought to the surface. Well, I don't see myself as ever being gay, so I can't. No, no, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm saying exactly. I think that's the, the caller that was asking why did you say that. You can, you can, but, but, but try to think, think, think about a, a, a couple, in, you know, in Rockingham County that yeah. that, that may make equal rights. That has served the court system. Right. Slide because I don't see that. I don't see that Christians are on the. I think the one you lose. That's not all of it. Is the very last caller. That one. That was the very last caller, wasn't it? No. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, folks. I. Uh, didn't have time to clip this off. I hate doing it this way. Believe what we believe. Uh, well, the gays get mad at Chris. Johnny's standing there agitating. I, I think you, you I think. <laughs> hmm. And this is Joe Prager saying so. Yeah, but Joe, don't you think he's fired oh, or resigned? Why is that not being said? I, I think you, you, I think. Bert Jones and Phil well, Berger. That's the call that called Johnny was judging. Or even answer what Johnny said. Johnny the judge. <laughs> Because he's so the biggest nerd from Christianity. Off to Johnny Robertson. Phil Berger, everybody ought to take their hat off to him. Not Johnny Robertson. And thank you. All right. All right, here's the call. I want to listen. Good afternoon. Last call. I don't think anybody should have to take their hat off to Johnny Robertson or even answer what Johnny Robertson has to say because he's the biggest darn hypocrite in Henry. Yeah, but Joe, don't you think he's bringing out a good point that you, 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 if you're gonna, you know, be biblical, you need to be 100% biblical, rather than choose your, you know, what you're gonna fight, what you're not gonna fight. Well, I agree with that, but it's in the Bible also that you and I are the I want to say this about Joe Prater because we're coming up against the clock here. You know, he, he said, well, the Bible just said just give him a piece of paper and that's a divorce man. Uh, will you turn to uh, Matthew 19 and, and uh, let's just read that again. Matthew 19 and let's just start in verse, about verse 6 there. Wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whosoever marrieth her which is put away, doeth commit adultery. It doesn't matter what paper they have. Okay, that's exactly right. What he, what, this writing of divorcement, Jesus said, well, Moses led you to do that because of the hardness of your heart, and you, and you did it for any reason. He said, but in the beginning, it was not God's intent, and then he gave the exception, and that's fornication. So, you know, if Joe Prater would spend more time in the Bible instead of on the buzz, he might know this. Yep. And, uh, you know, I just, I just thought about this, too. You know, his name's Joe Prater. You know, as his name is, so is he. And the Bible talks about a Prater, uh, a, a prating, <laughs> In, uh, uh, in, in the Bible, Prating is a babbler, someone who just babbles all the time. There's Joe Prater. You know, that's what he does. So, uh, you know, folks, if, if you really want to be sincere about what the Bible says, it's clear on what the Bible says about marriage and divorce. I mean, if you're honest about looking for it. Right. So, uh, uh, Same thing about the church. And I don't know how many times we've been around, around when right. you're in the church. And uh, so uh, is there, was there another call on here you wanted to look at? 
listen to? Um, I try to find it because I'm just. That one now, the guy did give a good definition of, of what church separation of church and state actually means. Okay. Is it on the uh, first one or the second one? That's the thing. You, mean you got two different clips on here. Oh, really? Yeah, the first half and the second half. All right. I don't want to find it. <laughs> uh, I hate doing it this way. All right. So, well, Mark, here's, here's really what I'm, you know, want to where I'd like to close or wrap this up with. And that is what we're saying about the, uh, the marriage and divorce situation. It's the, the folks in the religion, in the religion, they want to tout, they want to tout that, uh, you know, they're making a stand for, for truth. You know, they're making a stand for what God said. And what we've been showing is what they've been doing is they've actually been making it worse by not making a stand a long time ago. Right. And so, really, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like the religious people have been driving the car. Right? And this is, this is what the car looks like when the religious people get through driving. They're driving the marriage car. It's all beat up. The wheels are falling off. It's burned up. You know, there's, it's just it's not drivable. Total wreck. They have totally wrecked marriage. And then the homosexual community comes along and says, hey, we want to be married too. We want you to give us rights to marry. And the, the religious people go, oh, y'all will destroy our car. <laughs> y'all have already destroyed it. That's exactly right. You've already wrecked it. it you know, it's, it's just in total chaos. And yet now you're saying all of a sudden, no, if you drive, you might put a scratch in it. Well, you've already torn it up and run the wheels off exactly of it. That's right. It wasn't the homosexual community. Yeah. It's just like the division issue. You right. Know, they, they say we bring on the division, trying to get people to go back to the Bible. The division, they brought that on right. a long time ago. Well, you know, and and Mark, here's, here's uh, uh, I don't know, I, I can't... Uh, I was sent a text. I can't. I can't uh, process that right now. But you know, but what we're saying is, is folks, the real issue started a long time ago, and it always starts. What we always said, Mark, is when people get away from the Bible. These prayers were put in place for a reason. God yeah. intended for them to to uh, uh, uphold society, to make society better. And when men get away from these from these principles, society always falters. And when people are talking about you know separating the church and state, well, just ask me, answer me this: What principle, what principle, would you take away in order to have separated church and state? What would you take away if you want to separate church and state? What all would you have? What would you have left? Maybe. In other words, every principle, every good principle, every good law that is in place in our country is based upon. A, a principle in the Bible. If you say, well, separate church and state, well, the, 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 the state was founded upon godly principles. A creator. See that? And so you can't separate church and state in that sense. Now, I, again, I find it interesting. People want, they want to separate church and state until the state can do something for them, and then they want the state to dictate to the church. Right. You know? Yeah, but all the church is saying, all the church is saying is, here are some principles that will help our society. Mm -hmm. You know, here are some laws that need to be in place that will help our society, rules in place that will help our society. But friends, if you're not going to keep the laws to start with, and you're going to pick and choose, well, don't feel bad when the homosexual crowd or anybody else comes and says, well, if you can, if you can uh, abuse it and mistreat it, so can we. Look at this. Uh, here's what. Uh, this, uh, this woman, here's what she said, uh, Reverend Christine Brownlee, and she's answering uh, Jerry Falwell. She says, Jerry Falwell said, in a society with a 50% divorce rate, uh, it's my conviction that the church must restudy the word on the subject. We read that. Well, here's what she says. She said, if we can reevaluate, and that's not going to be able to read, if we can reevaluate biblical interpretations and secular laws to accommodate heterosexuals, 
then surely we can reevaluate the civil rights of gays and lesbians to receive the same legal benefits divorced many women enjoy. Well, mm -hmm. I agree. Right. If you're going to twist God's law and give people passes when it comes to heterosexual marriage, you know, well, why can't you do the same thing and twist and turn them and abuse it to accommodate everybody? Exactly right. And that's what we're saying, friends. When you don't keep what God says, you just open the door and let anything in. And that's what we say about everything when it comes to authority from God's Word. People say, well, what about church worship? Well, I'm okay with the piano, but I don't want the band. Well, you just open the door. See that? So, anyway, well, Mark, uh, I'm sure we'll be talking more about this uh, as the days go on because I know this is not... Uh, you know, not over by a long shot, but uh, we're out of time. So uh, I appreciate the phone calls. Hope this has helped. Hope this hope this has got people thinking and realizing, you know what, friends? We, we can't sit idly by. We've got to go all the way back and correct what we've done wrong yeah. and get back to following God's principles on all things, not just picking and choosing. And don't complain about society if you're not willing to do that's what's right. necessary to fix that's it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it all starts with doing what God says. Yeah. If, you're not a member of the, if you're not a member of the Lord's church, that's, that's your first problem. You can't even pray to God and get him to help, you know, help in these matters. You can't ask him to solicit his, his help in these matters because you hadn't even obeyed him. So uh, you don't obey the gospel. If you can, uh, uh, we can assist you in any way. You want to do that very thing, come out and visit with us at 2 Bitted Boulevard or 120 American Legion or 23 Starling Avenue. Remember to watch What Does the Bible Say the rest of this week, 8 to 10 o'clock, uh, tomorrow night and Saturday night. On the sister station. On the... Uh, uh, Martinsville. Martinsville, WMDV. So, uh, 18, I believe it is. Channel 18 in Henry County, Martinsville. So, thanks for watching. Have a good night. Always remember to ask what the Bible say. You'll get a word from the Lord. Downtown Danville. Now, this has been uh, going on for several weeks, and if you hadn't been aware of it, we'll kind of uh, enlighten you. Uh, there was a request from the Sutherland Mansion or Museum uh, Board of Directors to remove the Confederate flag from the museum. Let's just stop and say that this is a Confederate museum. It's called a Confederate museum. Uh, the Sutherland Mansion, which is also, you know, the Danville Museum of, uh, of uh, Fine Art so, uh, and History. So it's listed, like, you know, if you Google it, it's listed as a Confederate uh, the uh, last mansion of the Confederacy uh, and a Confederate museum and historical Confederate uh, museum and, and historical place. Now it's the Danville Museum of Fine Arts and History, also known as the Sutherland Mansion. So, uh, 20 years ago, 